Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News contributor Dr. Tara Narula. First up, Celebrex. For a significant portion of the population suffering from arthritis, this prescription drug can play an important role in their lives. And a new study suggests that despite earlier concerns, it does not pose a greater heart risk than similar drugs. The new research published in the New England Journal of Medicine concluded that Celebrex is just as safe for your heart as rival drugs like ibuprofen and naproxen. John took a look at the finding. 64-year-old Mary Kay Bossard, a respiratory therapist, takes Celebrex to relieve debilitating pain from arthritis. It's my hands, it's my shoulders, it's my elbows, it's my back. I've had back surgery because I had such severe arthritis. Celebrex works by targeting an enzyme responsible for pain and inflammation. It's a similar mechanism to the drug Vioxx, which was pulled from the market in 2004 because of increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Were you concerned? Well, if Vioxx is causing heart problems, what about Celebrex? It's the same group. I was concerned. There's that little niggly in the back of your mind going, oh, is it okay to take this every day? In 2005, the FDA required the maker of Celebrex to conduct a safety trial. 24,000 people at increased cardiovascular risk who had arthritis severe enough to require daily medication were given an anti-inflammatory drug, Celebrex, ibuprofen, or naproxen. They were then monitored for cardiovascular events such as heart attack, stroke, or death. Dr. Steve Nissen of the Cleveland Clinic led the 10-year study. I thought that it would probably tilt against uh, Celebrex. What actually happened? Uh, everybody was wrong, including me. It's pretty clear that it was not worse. If anything, it was trending a little bit toward being on the better side. The study also found a lower risk of gastrointestinal complications in Celebrex compared with the other two. It really does take a drug that was under a cloud of suspicion after Vioxx was withdrawn, and it lifts that cloud, and it lets us now think about this in different ways. So interesting. All right, you both reported on this, on these findings. I'm gastroenterologist, you're a cardiologist, you go first. <laughs> right, yeah, I think it does lift the cloud and it gives us another option, but it's always important to look at the limitations of the study, and uh -huh. there were a couple in this one. You know, 68% of the people stopped taking the drug, 30% were lost to follow-up, they weren't able to up-titrate the dose of Celebrex as they were the other medications, which could limit the interpretation. The patients uh, also were not were not as high risk as we would have hoped, in the sense that only 20% had previous cardiovascular disease and that's really the population that we're worried about uh, and then lastly you know in terms of aspirin that actually interacts with ibuprofen and naproxen it does not interact with Celebrex so we don't know which patients during the trial were on aspirin or not and whether that influenced the results and from my point of view of course uh, these kind of medications can cause ulceration the reason why the cox2 inhibitors that Vioxx was part of Celebrex is part of uh, came about was because they tend to cause fewer ulcers so from my point of view that's a very good thing but I think we, we need to emphasize we are not we are not talking about a person who occasionally takes an ibuprofen for a headache yeah. that's not what this study looked at these are people taking moderately high doses every day because they had arthritis so the little niggly in the back of the head is not <laughs> entirely that. gone love that <laughs> that's <laughs> I'm using that from now on. Medical term. <laughs> Moving on, let's talk about statins. Millions of Americans take these cholesterol-lowering drugs to combat heart disease. The American Heart Association ranks cardiovascular disease as the leading cause of death for both men and women. This includes strokes as well as heart attacks. The AHA estimates that every day more than 2,000 Americans die from these diseases, accounting for about one in seven deaths nationwide. This week, the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force released updated recommendations for the use of statins. Okay, Tara, so <laughs> exactly what are statins? Right, so statins, as you mentioned, very widely prescribed in this country, and they are primarily used to lower cholesterol, in particular the LDL, or the bad cholesterol, and they're very effective at doing that. They can lower it by about 30 to 60 percent. They're the only cholesterol-lowering drugs that have been shown to decrease heart attack and stroke. They come in lots of different potencies or you know, strengths, different types, uh, and the way that they work is by basically decreasing the production of cholesterol mm -hmm. in the body, by by the liver and increasing the receptors in the liver that sort of scavenge or pull out the bad cholesterol. So they decrease production and increase removal. Um, they also have some other effects, anti-inflammatory, potentially plaque stabilizing effects as well.
So what's the task force recommending? So this task force in 2008 just talked about screening. Now they're talking about who should be treated. Yeah. And there is an algorithm. Basically, if you are 40 to 75 and you have a risk factor being hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, or you smoke, then you have your doctor calculate what's called a 10-year risk score. And what that is is basically your risk of having a heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years. And we do that with a formula or an equation. If that risk score is greater than 10 percent, then there is benefit according to these recommendations for lower moderate dose statin. If the ben if the risk is greater than 7.5 percent, there's still benefit, albeit a little bit less, of again a low to moderate dose statin. Those over 76 years old, we don't have enough data to, to support one way or the other whether statins are helpful. Okay, John, so this class of drugs is proven to be fairly safe, but what are the potential side effects? So there's no free lunch, and you have to really <laughs> yes, have respect for all these medications. Aches and pains is very common. Uh, they can actually cause damage to the muscles, myopathy, especially in interaction with certain drugs. Uh, liver enzymes can go up. Uh, they can raise the blood sugar a little bit and actually slightly increase the risk of diabetes. And some people do report cognitive problems, some problems with memory. So you just have to, anytime you take any medicine, if it's pharmacologically active and can help, it's pharmacologically active and can hurt, and you just have to be aware. Is there something new going on? Talk to your doctor. Doctors John LaPook and Tara Narula, great to see you. Thanks for your time.